Uh, you know, thanks again for for uh, hosting another talk with Venture Cafe St. Louis. We're excited to have you and, and also your community here. And um, we'd love, uh, since this is an international audience, we'd love to have you type in where you're coming from in the chat, uh, whether you're from St. Louis or otherwise. Um, and uh, so Han's going to be talking today about uh, technology trends and investment in fintech um, and blockchain and how that's being affected by the pandemic and um, and so, uh, Han, thanks again, and I will turn it over to you to, to kick it off. Well, thank you. Welcome to Venture Cafe, um, the talk. Um, you know, today's topic is on fintech and blockchain trend, and then actually, I, I will give you a practical example of an actual fintech company who just entered um, our regional market here, okay? Um, so, my name is Han Ko. I'm, uh, I'm the president and CEO of USACO Group. Uh, USAC Group is a uh, international um, VC and accelerator company. I'm going to talk briefly about that later. So uh, we have a lot to talk about, and um, so I'm going to jump right in. All righty. So first agenda. Um, first of all, I'd like to uh, uh, express my uh, gratitude and appreciation to Venture Cafe. Venture Cafe is actually a international program. Um, have a presence about in ten countries right now, I believe, and. Uh, uh, especially uh, Tyler and Han Lu, uh, who are dedicated um, staff of Venture Cafe St. Louis. And I believe St. Louis uh, Venture Cafe is the, one of the most popular one uh, in, on the globe, actually, I heard that. So also, I'd just like to share with you, the uh, we have a special audiences today. They're um, joined from overseas. Um, actually, we have a, uh, some folks from all the way from South Korea. They're actually about 7 a.m. right now. So they're a very dedicated audience. <laughs> okay, so... Uh, uh, so anyway, um, go back to agenda. Um, so you know, we're going to introduce the program, and then we're going to talk about the fintech and, and blockchain trend. And then, as I explained, we're going to give actual example of a fintech company, startup company, who entered, uh, which entered uh, our St. Louis uh, in greater St. Louis market. Okay. And then at the end, I uh, invited a few business leaders, uh, our leaders in our region, so they're going to give advice on our business environment uh, as of now. And then I'm going to do Q and A. Okay, good. So I'm going to just take, just, just take a couple of minutes on um, uh, explaining who we are, USACO Group. Um, we're basically an international VC company. So we're investing, accelerating, consulting, and we primarily um, uh, tying our US market and South Korean market. And that's what they call us a solid bridge between USA and South Korea and Asia. Um, so we actually we do have some investment in uh, other countries other than uh, Asia, uh, other than South Korea, actually. Yeah. So also we are proud official global partner of South Korean government. So we work with uh, multiple agencies of South Korea, along with the private sector companies. As you can see, some of the logos on there. Uh, you see the uh, KT investment at the bottom. That is the uh, uh, one of the biggest telecom company in South Korea. We actually are uh, partnership with them, along with their, some other um, organizations. So the presence, uh, we have a presence in St. Louis, of course. And then uh, Seoul, we have two offices in South, Seoul, South Korea. And then we have presence in Texas and uh, California area. And then uh, as you can see, uh, we work with the city of Seoul, Seoul Startup Hub. It's like a CIC in, in, you know, in, um, in high steroid, okay? Um, so one of our offices is located right on that building. Uh, in Seoul. And then uh, we work with uh, some uh, South Korean provisional government. And the US side, we work with uh, a company called WeFax. It's actually about $50 million uh, fund. And then uh, uh, some other uh, uh, software and uh, blockchain um, com uh, blockchain uh, accelerator companies. And along with that, um, we have uh, we work with the uh, multiple other uh, uh, academic uh, institutions um, in, in USA and uh, South Korea. So without further ado, I want to talk about the, uh, today's real topic, the fintech. So, so the problem with the traditional financial um, service industry, you know, um, that's what I want to talk about here. So everybody knows, uh, you know, our traditional financial service industry is very expensive and efficient. Okay, so the statistics statistics shows that thirty percent of the customers. Um, really hate their own bank, you know, sometimes including myself, okay, you know, so that's actually no fact. And uh, more interestingly, about 75% of the budget of banks, uh, in maintenance budget actually spent on just maintaining uh, existing infrastructure product, okay, not to develop new ones, but just to maintain, okay, so that's a reality right now. So again, you know, that's because obviously, 
the, uh, the financial industry has a legacy of a decades uh, of a brick and mortar concept. So that's how it worked out. So it is very uh, highly complex and very expensive um, uh, infrastructure-based uh, industry with a lot of regulation, right? So I came up with a small diagram here at the bottom. Um, we have a layers of, uh, 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 layers of uh, categories and then uh, um, services um, from license, uh, the core system, payment, data, regulatory, and then fraud in user interface. So each, if you look at each of uh, uh, each category down there, it actually multiple companies are in play. So you made, you try to put this together. So in other words, when you go in there, go to bank and make a deposit, all of these, some of these, all of these banks has a one or two has to play in that its own layer behind the scene. Okay, so this is why it's so expensive and so um, outdated in a way. Okay. So let's talk about the solution to the problem then, okay? So uh, what, what is the solution to all this problem? Well, the FinTech is a problem, okay? But what do you mean by FinTech exactly? That's what I'm trying to get at. So uh, it basically, uh, using the software company for FinTech solution, I'm talking about FinTech solution is actually a lot cheaper now. That's a point. Okay, so compared to say about 10 years ago, uh, if you want to start a small bank, it will cost, uh, you know, about 100,000 or more about 10 years ago, uh, the cash, uh, US dollars, okay? So now be a lot more with the appreciation, right? And then months is months of deploy time, right? So if you have IT staff wanna, if you hire an IT guy to start up your bank and you know, banking uh, financial service solutions, then he'll have to go out buy the server and he have to go buy a license and then configure system. And then he have to buy a software license on the top of that and then put in your network and then you will have to uh, make it, uh, you know, compliant with uh, um, all the regulatory regulatory requirements, right? But now it's actually a lot simpler. You know, cost is uh, say a uh, hundred bucks in one day to deploy. And how how can we? How is it possible? Well, in one uh, one solution, uh, one reason was that because cloud technology such as uh, AWS, uh, you know, Amazon Web Service, so those these technologies can give you a quick and cheap platform to develop an experiment and then uh, uh, we'll bring, it's a revolutionized whole industry, okay? So this is actually one uh, great example. So, you know, people normally say that about say, let's say about 10%, uh, 10 to 20% of the workforce right now in financial services right now, right? But they estimated in about 10 years, it's gonna be probably about 56% of the uh, old workforce will be some, somehow tied to uh, financial services. And I'll tell you why example over here, right there. Now Uber is one example. So Uber, if they if they build the infrastructure that they're using, they would have cost more than a million dollars, right? But you know, they didn't have to because they have to they were able to use all this technology, you know, such as AWS. Uh, by the way, um, I don't I'm not affiliated with AWS or I'm not getting paid by AWS, Amazon. I just took an example of it because it's the most popular one. Okay, just uh, disclose that, okay? So Okay, now, so let's look at some uh, current um, FinTech technology the trend and statistics, more statistics. So in 2019, um, uh, more than $15 billion, $15 billion were invested in global uh, FinTech startups, okay? So if you look at the data compared to previous year, 2018, it's a 20% increase. So it's a, it's a huge increase, as you can tell, you know, but it's one year, 20% jump in the amount. And this is actually official, uh, to publish the statistics by Accenture in 2019. Okay. Also, another trend that we focus on, we should pay attention to is cryptocurrency, you know, which is, uh, uh, you, know, you know, big hype been going on, big hype uh, going on with uh, Bitcoin, but, uh, you know, in more technology uh, side of it, and then a uh, biggest trend and PayPal uh, decide to uh, uh, embrace the cryptocurrency in 2021. So it's, in a few months, you will see a cryptocurrency on a PayPay platform, the official announced, right? And then also uh, the blockchain is the one technology that we should uh, uh, um, focus on as well in FinTech. Um, I'm gonna give you a little more example of it later on, but actual practical example of it, but that's another huge uh, factor underlying technology in FinTech. And also um, the, the regulatory process legislation uh, um, changes. Uh, it's actually always, uh, you know, uh, regulatory and you know, the, the law is always behind the uh, technology and business trend. So, but they're catching up, okay? So that's another area. 
And, uh, and, and the statistics uh, shows that, and experts say that because the US, when I compare countries, our US and to other countries, we are a little bit behind in other leading nations in terms of uh, adapting changes, but we are getting there, okay? So that's how I feel. Because I do a lot of uh, um, businesses and travel overseas, so I, I tend to compare our market to uh, uh, other countries always, and that's why I thought that this comment is uh, kind of valuable to you. So now the important point of uh, the fintech trend right now is that uh, I briefly mentioned that about you know more than fifty percent of people will probably something to do or will be um, worked in a financial service industry. So for example, the many large existing businesses will adapt to financial services business model with fintech. Okay, because otherwise without fintech they would not be able to do it, but now they will, and this is actually everybody says that this is a given fact. Okay, so in other words, just a huge uh, um, you know revolution in the industry. So I put down some exam, uh, company names, uh, fintech company names, uh, Stripe and um, Fat Merchant and Phoenix and uh, uh, Played and all that. So I'll go over a couple of examples to highlight uh, them, okay? So first of all, Stripe, I told you about, right? So this company called Stripe, uh, some, some of you probably know, but uh, average user doesn't really matter, but Stripe is uh, in right now valued at $35 billion, 35 billion. Okay, so it's uh, founded by two um, young teenager brothers, um, Patrick and John uh, Collison from MIT and uh, in San Francisco and uh, 10 years ago. And they're providing online payment processing solutions for web and e-commerce. So they're actually uh, worth at the 35 billion. And now also they're dipping into uh, business fi uh, financing. So actually they're loaning money to businesses as well. So, you know, like I said, uh, you know, this even fintech company itself is uh, following the trend of trend of a financing, uh, business financing and financial industry um, uh, business model. So this Stripe then just to be more um, specific, what do they do, you know? So you know, if you're on the right, you see the in Instacart, if you try to make an online payment, I'm sure you've seen the name Instacart and then Amazon, you know, Shopify, Google, and even Zoom and, and Lyft. They all, you know, this software company is actually works at behind the scene, make this online uh, processing uh, seamless and possible. So I'll give a little more example about the FinTech trend. Uh, we mentioned that the many existing companies will adapt to financial services as, it, as their own business model with FinTech, right? So Apple is one example, you know, Apple now used to be a, you know, PC and phone company and they are in, in credit card business. And then Uber, uh, ride share company actually in a, uh, their issue of, uh, in, in conjunction with, uh, in collaboration with Visa, they issue credit card and Lyft uh, provide a free banking to their drivers. Uh, and then of course Shopify, and then Shopify as a like online store business, right? Start with, but now their 50% of their service is from financial services, 50%. So, which is uh, was not a main uh, line of business, they start changing. So this is trend right now. So I wanna, Tell a little bit more about the traditional, um, you know, financial service uh, in this scenario. This is the same picture, uh, same slide I showed you earlier. But uh, with all this, uh, imagine all these uh, little pieces has has to come in play together and then uh, uh, make a, you know, bring value and services to customer. Um, how do we, how do we make it easier and cheaper? You know, that that is a key, right? So here's a. Uh, here's the actual what's what's the trend right now. So all of these seven you know multiple layers, and uh, you tie into a one seamless service. Okay, based on technology such as uh, AWS and other things. So uh, uh, that is actually um, what the beauty of this whole uh, fintech um, uh, technology fintech trend is. Okay, so I'm going to give you a little more specific example of it. As in the banking connection scenario. Okay, so let's say your traditional banking connection, right? So, you know, you, I'm sure a lot of you, most of you try to connect your bank account to one to another um, in the past, right? So from PNC bank to say US bank account, you know, and then make payment whatnot, right? And there are so many um, uh, moving uh, parts and pieces, uh, fragmented pieces in there, okay? But now the solution to this uh, is this. There's a company called Plate. This company is actually valued at about five, about 5.3 billion uh, 2020. And uh, so they're making this connecting account possible behind the scene, okay? So this is a, the, one of the example and trend, okay? 
And then uh, I want to give you another example of debit card, the checking account scenario, okay? So, so you actually have a, would you, let's say you decide to go uh, buy a jug of milk on the way home tonight. And then you show up a, a local grocery store and then uh, pick up the jug of milk, try to make a payment and a cashier's with your check card, right? Well, you know, your all these little um, uh, pieces, not little pieces, but important pieces of bank partners, uh, connectivity layers and payment processor. And, uh, you know, of course, compliance reporting services, they all, uh, you know, play uh, behind the scene and they're working together, but they're got their own, um, um, roles in, in their own way, okay, which is very expensive and uh, um, uh, outdated like, in a way. Okay? So solution to that is another company called Synapse. Okay? This company is valued at about, uh, they estimated from 250 to five, $500 million as of uh, um, today. Okay? But this is a solution that actually ties all together, making it seamless. Okay? So again, this is another example of, uh, um, of the um, uh, FinTech make the services. So, so bottom line is a lot of these uh, company, you know, average uh, uh, customers at the bank will not see it. You know, credit card users will not see it, but it, it's actually making things a lot cheaper behind the scene. And then which makes the a lot more options to businesses to uh, provide a better and cheaper solutions to uh, end user customers like us. So now the blockchain then. So, uh, you know, as we talked about blockchain is one of the main underlying technology in FinTech area. And, um, uh, blockchain is touching the area, many various areas, and especially fintech, such as uh, like fraud regulation, like the data security, right? To uh, KYC AML, uh, I'll talk more about that in a few minutes. Um, you know, make payment side of it, and digital identity verification, and then uh, you know, open banking side of it. There's multiple areas. Okay, so um, I'm going to talk a little more about details with the actual practical example of it. Okay, so to do that, I'd like to um, introduced a company called Darwin Blockchain LLC. Uh, they just entered the US market, actually our you know, greater St. Louis market about a, a month and a half ago, okay? And we have a uh, uh, vice president from the company sitting here. Uh, can you raise your hand? Uh, Mino Jung, Mr. Mino Jung, uh, raise your hand, please. Uh, I don't think you can hear me. He's sitting right there. Um, his background says Dubai. He's the vice president of this company. And he's actually joining us from Seoul, South Korea right now. So he's part of the member of the company. So, so this uh, uh, Darwin blockchain a business model and product summary is as follows. So first of all, the, their product is approved under uh, patent intellectual properties. And then also they're currently in use in about 650 locations. So one of the example is that when you land in say South Korea, you scan your passport. Uh, one of the scanning machine technology is actually owned by an by this company, okay? So this is the company they entered the uh, greater St. Louis market about a month and a half ago. So um, basically, so this company provides a patented and market proven KYC technology with user-friendly uh, financial service solutions. So KYC, for uh, those of you who are not familiar with the terminology, it's KYC is a, stands for know your client, know your client. And basically it's a part of the regulatory system in the financial industry uh, that imposed by, you know, it's a, a jurisdiction, uh, it's its own jurisdiction government, okay? And of course, the bank industry, financial industry, handling your money, holding your money. So uh, they're heavy regu regulation, heavily regulated industry. So there's a lot of regulations go by, which requires um, a lot of different processes, but FinTech technology like uh, theirs make things very possible, easy and cheap. Okay, that's, that's the uh, basically a nutshell um, explanation. So their technology, for example, their KYC in, uh, technology can make this uh, currency exchange possible, their fiat money and digital money exchange. I'll give you more examples on that in a few minutes, but uh, also uh, make a deposit withdrawal, you know, regular banking, uh, the uh, transaction you can do, you can do it um, basically on a, uh, uh, kiosk machine without going to branch. In other words, you're doing this on the machine. So I'll give you an illustration of that uh, in a few minutes. So on the top of that, the, they're, they're employing blockchain technology based on integrated digital uh, crypto ATM and you know, POS and point of sale system with the um, application of ID authentication and also ID uh, alteration detection. So that technology actually uh, is equ equipped with the uh, a recognized worldwide passport, the global passport, 
So if you bring US passport scan, it will work, uh, you know, and uh, British passport will work, okay? So it, on that. Also, it's actually based on um, uh, FATF uh, compliance, meaning the FATF stands for uh, Financial Action Task Force for AML. Um, a lot of acronyms, and you cannot familiar apologize, but that's how the industry goes here. So, you know, as, uh, FATF is a basically intergovernmental agency that actually um, uh, the uh, preparing for uh, they're geared toward the anti money laundering because AML is anti money laundering. Okay, so these are all regulatory process that any financial institution has had to go through. So their technology is in compliance with those already. So um, with the uh, uh, kiosk system and then along with the other uh, um, uh, you know uh, technologies and services, um, they have a. Uh, uh, point of sales with the QR code, and then also uh, the uh, digital ID based on QR code is one um, uh, interesting concept there. And then actually, in, in actually it's already in use right now. Um, and then uh, also you can make a payment in physical currency and virtual asset payment on, at the machine. Okay, so again, these are all of services are still subject to uh, U.S. regulatory processes, uh, but technology is already there. Okay, so that I'm just trying to I'll give you an example of it. So I'm gonna give you an actual example of it, how it works, okay? So for example, this company's technology, uh, if you see that's the ID, so you scan your ID in the picture on the machine. It's a basic, let's say you show up on a uh, um, uh, ATM machine like kiosk. You just scan your ID, okay? Your ID could be uh, your passport or uh, some uh, recognized domestic um, ID. You will authenticate your ID, it's real or not. And then once the authentic authentication process is done, you will actually um, take your, uh, scan your face, uh, based AI-based facial recognition. So combine these two, they're gonna first uh, identify it's re really you with your own ID, okay? So uh, that's technology right there already. And then once that step, step is passed, uh, they'll take uh, uh, your more personal verification, meaning that your biometric or password, okay? And then once that is done, you're done. So uh, you know the, uh, the uh, let's say you're um, you visiting say uh, uh, South Korea and you don't want to bring a whole lot of cash. Of course, you will have your credit card, but you will uh, you want to have uh, access to your cash sometimes, right? So you go up to cash um, this kiosk and go through the process, and then eventually at the net result is you get a, a digital ID at the end uh, with a QR code based. Okay, so you don't have to get a additional uh, national ID for that specific country that you're visiting because this QR code just works uh, for your financial need uh, while you stay, okay? So uh, with that the digital ID, what do you do? Well, um, you basically scan now your ID and then your digital ID, and then uh, you have your own uh, uh, you know, personal uh, pass password and, uh, and biometric, and then you can actually uh, exchange, exchange a fund, change money from say, uh, um, you know, the uh, um, British pound to US dollars or Korean won or Japanese yen, you know, so, so all, the old, um, you know, the technology right there, okay? So I just wanna give give example of actual technology that actually already here. And then especially this company is interesting because they just entered uh, uh, our local market. So uh, I, want, I want to bring this, uh, 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 your attention to this company, okay? So now, um, you know, we have only given an hour, so I was moving a little bit fast because we have uh, some special um, uh, guests sitting joining us here today. So uh, you know, again, like I said, I want to um, uh, give uh, our business leader, local uh, regional business leaders, a chance to give us advice, especially some of the people in Korea. They are listening in and joining in, so I want them to hear. And then actually, a few people are from uh, out of state as well. So uh, <clears throat> I'd like to give you. <clears throat> I'd like to introduce the two people here. Uh, <clears throat> first of all, Rhonda Sojet, she's the executive director and um, leadership council in Illinois, and some people probably know her. So she's right there. And then uh, also uh, we have a new one, Violet. She's the president of the uh, Asian American Chamber of Commerce. Um, he's in Bristol. Okay, so uh, I, I think that um, um, these two professionals on each side of the um, uh, ocean um, can bring us the value. So uh, Nuan, could you, uh, first of all, welcome. Thanks so much for joining us. 
And can Thank you, you. Um, you know, give us some advice to uh, uh, introduction to uh, um, you know the our market, and then what IACC um, Asian American Chamber of Commerce uh, can offer for any businesses coming to uh, our region? Yeah, uh, can can you guys hear me? Yeah. Okay. Uh, thanks, Han, for uh, for for that presentation and for and for giving. Uh, me a, a chance to, to say hi and to meet everybody virtually on, on behalf of the Asian American Chamber of Commerce. Um, I'll, I'll start with that I, and, and then go on to a little bit about St. Louis and my, and my thoughts. Um, the role of the, of the chamber here, really we have, th we have three focuses. Uh, first, supporting uh, and, and connecting our Asian owned businesses um, as, as whether it's starting up um, whether you're a small, mid-size, or even a larger um, locally owned company, um, we, 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 we serve to, con to connect you to whether it's other businesses, uh, support um, uh, services, and, and things like that. Uh, the second one is supporting Asian professionals, um, connecting them, growing their network, uh, in and around the area. And then finally, growing and supporting uh, foreign direct investment to St. Louis, uh, which is, is critical for the growth of the region. Um, so we really serve as kind of a connector uh, with local organizations, whether it's, it's groups like Venture Cafe, the World Trade Center, St. Louis Economic Development Partnership, groups and organizations like that. We all work together uh, to try to grow the region um, as a whole. Uh, we have a extremely diverse um, city, and that's both from a cultural uh, and a business standpoint. Uh, and we really think that that's that's one of the key differenti differentiators for our uh, for, for our region. Um, we have St. Louis is an absolutely wonderful city to do business in, uh, and it is through that diversity of of thinking, through the diversity of our uh, culture. Um, and whether it's focusing on technology, whether you're an entrepreneur or, you know, people uh, think about St. Louis as extremely centrally located um, in, our, in our country. So if it's manufacturing or distribution, um, we, we are a, a tremendous area uh, and opportunity for that. So um, my advice uh, for somebody either looking to do business here or grow your business is, is to reach out uh, to all the different organizations um, and, and really leverage uh, everybody's knowledge and connections uh, within our city. We, we think of ourselves as a, 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 a small town, but a big city. Um, and if you're from here and you grew up here, uh, your connections are, are deep. And uh, I think most people are one or two connections away from getting you or getting any business the right answer uh, and the right connections uh, for whatever you need. So that's my my suggestion. And thank you. And if you have any questions or, or need anything from 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 the Asian Chamber, please feel free to reach out to Han, who's one of our board members, or myself, or anybody else on the on the board. Well, thank you, thank you. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, a small town, big city. Um, yeah, they actually resonate. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah. Um, now, um, I want to turn the table, uh, turn the floor to Rhonda. Um, like I said, she's the you know, executive director of Leadership Council. Leadership Council is a very reputable um, uh, organization with a long history, actually very large organization. So uh, Rhonda, could you uh, please also um, explain what's uh, especially um, Southern Illinois market can offer and then also about your organization, please? Oh, absolutely. Can you hear me okay? Yes, I can hear you. Thank you. Okay. Okay, great. Um, well, thank you so much, Han, for inviting me. And just to add on to what's been said, uh, you know, the St. Louis marketplace is very diverse and it's very culturally enriching. And so as part of that market, the Southwestern Illinois region consists of nine counties on the Illinois side of the river. And those nine counties have over 700,000 people. We're the second largest population center in the state of Illinois, and also fourth largest in the St. Louis MSA. So a lot of people, big industry. And, and part of that big industry is really geared to transportation, logistics, warehouse, manufacturing, a lot of 
biotechnology and ag. And we have a huge cybersecurity market um, due to a military base that's very close, Scott Air Force Base. And so many of the things that companies look for in terms of AI, robotics, automation, those are things we're working on heavily to make sure this area is ready for the businesses of the future. And so part of our initiatives in uniting the region for growth, which is our mission, is all about um, connecting broadband connectivity throughout our region. So everybody is very well connected and just serving the needs of our business community from a competitive intelligence point of view. That's what my doctorate degree is in. And so matching people and bringing people together for strategic partnerships and ability to be better as multiple businesses working together, we do a, a lot of that type of work. And so it's been just an absolute thrill and advantage to be able to bring a lot of companies together and so for everybody on the phone and for people that are, you know, across the world, if you're going to come to our marketplace, I uh, certainly support what has been said before, you know, get engaged with our organizations, we would love to invite you here be part of our community. You know, there's a lot of people in our market that would love to help your business be successful here in the St. Louis marketplace and also Southwestern Illinois. So Han, did you have anything else you wanted me to say about Southwestern Illinois? We're very business um, friendly. <laughs> yeah, they're very friendly. Actually, yeah, could you mention that uh, the uh, logistics wise, uh, centrally locate, uh, location, and then uh, the airport support, right? I believe, right? Could you mention that? Oh, yeah. So in Southwestern Illinois and throughout the St. Louis metropolitan area, warehouse distribution and logistics is a major part of our supply chain competitive intelligence and positioning strategy. And so just in the last um, several months, we've received over $2.4 billion in new money for multimodal infrastructure. So you'll get the state of the art transportation um, infrastructure to anywhere you wanted to go in the world. And so that's, that's a very big part. And so we see a lot of manufacturing firms here from agribusiness to green energy, advanced and light manufacturing, chemical, medical processing, and just so many other industry segments just because of the location. It's just a perfect location in the center of the United States for transportation logistics out to anywhere you want to go. Well, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and like uh, uh, Rhonda mentioned, uh, we have a huge um, uh, pool of talents um, because we have local uh, universities and as well as uh, uh, NGA, uh, National Geospatial Agency. Um, and then so we have a huge pool of that, um, uh, the, the talents also here too. So, you know, again, uh, like I said, uh, when I travel overseas, I actually, like I said, I travel to South Korea, my, my office, uh, you know, every so often. And uh, one of the things I do is that they ask me a lot about the, uh, the market. I mean, they, of course, they know Silicon Valley. And of course, they know uh, uh, New York, Los Angeles, okay? But uh, the Midwest, uh, you know, this is actually what I tell them. And this is what I have not met any, any single person who actually disagrees with me on this. And if you go uh, as a startup, if you go to Silicon Valley, um, uh, start up uh, your own company, the cash burn rate is probably about five times more than what you can have here. Okay, so you know it's a if you uh, again there's a uh, different factors into it, but um, you know just cash cash burn rate is one of the major factor. So uh, I, I collect some data and statistics, and then when I share it with them um, over there, it actually really uh, makes sense. And one of the reasons that a lot of these companies, uh, I brought uh, we our company brought about you know several companies that 2019 to um, um, you know our region, and then a lot of them are that's a, one of the major factors that okay this is how much of a, investment we have and this is how how long we need to sustain to uh, 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 generate the traction and revenue and then uh, we just didn't you know if you go uh, places in high expense area it's just the math doesn't just add up you know so that decide to that is one of the major factors so that I thought that there was another factor that um, involved you know I see actually uh, 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 Perry, he's from Canada, by the way. I didn't uh, mention the Canada, so we do have actually global uh, um, forum right now. So, anyway, um, yeah. So that's actually um, uh, what uh, what have and thanks so much for Rhonda and. Uh,
anyone to uh, uh, introduce in the market. Yeah. So I'm gonna, I'd like to open the floor to any questions, any discussion point. Um, I actually, I ran through the, my slide really quick to allow more time for um, people's discussion and just participation. So, yeah. Anybody? Well, then actually I have a question for uh, um, Mr. Min Ho Jung, he's the, uh, with the Darwin, but he also uh, has a business in uh, actually Dubai. Uh, he's got a, he's got a uh, kind of FinTech business uh, uh, with the uh, cryptocurrency and all that. So uh, uh, Mr. Min Ho Jung, do you mind uh, when you get, I didn't, I didn't ask him to prepare, so I don't know what kind of response I'm gonna get, but can you, can you, uh, he's smiling, <laughs> can you uh, say, some things about your business model uh, <clears throat> and how you how you started uh, your business in Korea and then uh, expanded to um, Dubai and now in the US. You know, can you uh, say a few words if possible? Um, are you there? Okay. Okay. Sorry, I, I'm, I'm catching you off guard. I know that, but <laughs> but I think that this, uh, uh, I think the audience will uh, have a, uh, this I think is a pretty valuable opportunity for them to listen to your um, background and expertise in, in general. Yeah. So how your business uh, started in Korea and then uh, uh, branched off to uh, Dubai and uh, uh, it's very interesting. Uh, Oh, oh yeah. He said uh, yeah. he cannot, he could not hear me well. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't realize that. Yeah. Sorry, sir. 안 돼. 그러면은 제가 대신 뭐 설명할까? 네네. 그럼 제가 네네. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know what? Actually, uh, um, uh, if actually, uh, yeah. Actually, I think I probably he couldn't hear me well. Um, his earpiece is not working well. I didn't realize that. Well, I apologize here. Yeah. So, um, any any other questions or? So actually, then I, I want to direct one uh, one opinion. I want to ask uh, uh, Perry Perry your um, opinion on this. Um, you know, I mean, you're a global uh, uh, VC, and you know, Perry is investor. Uh, he he's in Canada, and he lives in Canada. But <clears throat> yeah, uh, we, we met him. Uh, we met together at the CES, um, and uh, he's a global uh, investor and working with actively working with the companies, uh, Canadian company, U.S. company, all different and very high tech as well, including. Uh, uh, I'll let him talk about it. You know, maybe you can just talk a little bit about um, uh, what you're doing and how all uh, these markets are tied together. Um, and if you know any, uh, uh, you know, industry that uh, fits well and in current situation, that'd be great, please. So, so, hey, Han, thanks very much. And by the way, Han, thank you for setting this up. I think it's it's great to bring uh, leaders together and um, and have open discussion about about. <laughs> growth and about supporting each other in business. I think, and especially now when, when we have to do it this way and we can't have dinner, I think it's uh, it's great that you <laughs> set this up. So I prefer dinner by the way, but, but you know, I'll, I'll take this. Um, so, so look, um, you know, um, COVID, we're, we're, we're all here. We all have this, I call it, you know, the COVID blues. Uh, hopefully um, the people here and their families are healthy and are not being uh, impacted that way. but. But still, even if you're not impacted physically, um, everyone kind of is like a little bit down, right? Because it's a different way of, of doing uh, business and, and managing your life. And, and what I found is you have to, and I do this every day, I wake up and I say, you know what, what am I going to do today? What am I going to learn? Who am I going to talk to? How am I going to help someone? Yeah, yeah, there's business. And what am I going to do there? And I think, you know, that that is a global statement and, and everyone needs to do that. I mean, I, I talked to um, a new CEO of a company that I had no idea what the company was. I was introduced by a VC. Uh, he was based in Vancouver. We talked for an hour last night about his business and we had lots in common. Um, I can do some things to help him. I might invest in his business because it's a compelling business. And every day I meet someone new, every day I learn something new. And uh, I think it's a tremendous time. And uh, I think everyone needs to embrace it. So. 
um, that that's a bit of passion talking. I, I you know, it, it's it's not Sunday and I'm preaching, but uh, it's okay because I think we all have to do that. Um, to the discussion matters here. I mean, it sounds to me like you know there's a compelling reason for businesses to to locate you know in, in the middle of the country because of both logistics, um, uh, access to services, uh, you know, and um, uh, certainly cost uh, attractive kind of uh, returns for uh, resources, engineering and otherwise. So I think, you know, th that's, that's great. And I, I think that's good work that you're doing here, Han, to, to bring that together. Oh, and yeah, thank you. Thank you. Right. So um, anyone, uh, uh, yep, still you have uh, another about 15, 10 minutes. So go ahead and shoot any questions and uh, topic uh, that you want to talk about. So. I had a question. Um, I've worked in the payments industry as well as financial services, software platforms like payment switches and cores, as well as fraud. And um, so I guess I'm kind of an expert a little bit in the area you're presenting on. Um, in regard to the blockchain technology that is being proposed, how is that going to fit in with some of the existing infrastructure or is it um, in regard to the financial services industry? Right, very good question actually, yeah. That's a, a lot of people actually are um, thinking about this. So the blockchain technology is uh, based on uh, the, you know, the most of the, there's a like, a, there are standard, um, the, the, the platform, right? So either existing staff platform, they also, um, they created their own something called mainnet, right? So when they, um, then they created their own mainnet or using Ethereum, like Ethereum platform, they come up with the application, but that application has to work with the other, um, uh, other existing uh, environment, right? So to do that, um, there, there is a, uh, the, uh, the other you know, example, like a plate or uh, or um, you know, snaps, right? Those companies come in. So those companies will bring uh, solutions and uh, a value to to adding and uh, basically adding, connecting those uh, uh, softwares. In other words, right? So uh, that's all fits together. So that's exactly what I was uh, uh, explaining earlier. So uh, the uh, like, for example, blockchain. Uh, for example, blockchain uh, solution uh, bring a value to, uh, let's say, uh, uh, storing uh, data, so uh, personal data, right? Um, so, for example, let me step back and give you an actual example of it here. So, um, the uh, um, in, in Korea right now, in technology like this in in use for contact tracing. Okay, so uh, for example, let's say this is already happening in South Korea. When you go into Seoul, when you walk in a Try to walk in a restaurant, have a meal. Um, they'd like to, uh, they like to have uh, some kind of record that you were here. Okay, it's not because they want to track your uh, privacy, but because in case somebody was there, they want to know. Uh, they want to have an option to reach out to you. That okay, uh, you had a dinner uh, last night, and somebody will report it as a COVID uh, infection. So please go check yourself out. Okay, so that system is already in place. So we have so much of a, a private a personal data <clears throat> involved in, in there. Of course, by the way, they're not using uh, a, your personal uh, name. So remember that uh, I showed you in the example um, that uh, digital ID, DID. Uh, so QR code. So the, you actually have a QR code generated by those uh, technology that I showed you earlier on your mobile. You scan your mobile QR code upon entry, then you will keep a record of it. So, uh, and that uh, data is encrypted and uh, all the, uh, uh, what do you call, the personal data is stripped. So they cannot really, really track it for the privacy purpose, but you will be there. So in case there is a, a, a incident where there was a, you know, COVID, um, you know, COVID uh, patient that had a die in there, then everybody around that, that time period will get a text message. So it's already happening. So uh, you know, this type of example uh, of uh, the blockchain usage, and um, and then uh, so those are you know a lot of blockchain technology will actually uh, uh, will be employed by different services, but those different services will be tied into with the other uh, fintech uh, company uh, like a Plaid and uh, you know like Stripe, you know those companies will uh, play a role in there. Okay, so I hope that answered your um, question. So I guess, is there somebody from the company that's on the phone? 
uh, from the company, but actually the tech, tech, technical technology, tech, uh, the engineer actually is not on the phone. Their management person is on the phone right now. Um, okay. So he's a gentleman who, uh, yeah, who would buy. I mean, we can actually chat about this uh, uh, later. Um, you can just Google my company, Usako Group. Actually, I'm an investor in that company. So I have a, a close uh, uh, tie to it. Actually, I'm, I'm actually basically, I'm, because of the COVID, they couldn't come over this, uh, they couldn't actually physically come over. So I did, uh, our company did all the legwork. So I'm intimately involved in their operation. So you, you need more information, questions, you can reach out to me uh, later. Um, actually, I'll, uh, I'll put my uh, email on the chat room. Um, so uh, you can actually have that too, okay? So, yeah. Sounds good, Amy. I, I'm really glad. What kind of industry are you? Uh, I know you said fintech, but more specifically, what kind of industry are you at? I've worked for acquirers, which, you know, in layman's terms, most people may refer to them as payment processors. I've also worked for fraud and risk management companies that do AI machine learning. And like I said, I've worked on the financial services platform side where they actually set up the cores or the banking payment switches and so forth and infrastructure for the actual platform. So I understand this probably a lot better than most people do because I've wor worked in so many different facets of the industry. Gotcha. So your capacity was engineering or or what kind of field uh, or product management or just curious? No, um, so I've basically done um, kind of a variety of like either sales account management, but uh, I've worked pretty intimately with setting up basically new customizations and working with professional services and developers and so forth as well. Oh, wow. So you, you, you've you seen a trend and you will see the trend continuously, I guess, right? I'm sorry. I, I don't know which uh, uh, window are you at. What was your name again, ma'am? Jolene. Um, oh, Jolene. Oh, okay. Got it. All right. Got you. I see that. All right. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, we can continue the conversation, um, you know, uh, afterwards, of course. Yeah. So thank you for uh, uh, bringing your question and you know attention to uh, this topic. Yep. So. Yeah. Sure. Yep. And uh, let's see here. Uh, uh, let's see here. Um, actually, also, uh, unless you have another question, I'd like to um, uh, uh, introduce uh, Mi Jung uh, Hibitz. Actually, she's the lady um, in a picture, and um, she is the actually another. Um, uh, what do you call uh, the executive director? I'm sorry, executive director of uh, Global Chamber of Commerce in uh, Baltimore and Washington DC area. Okay, so uh, again, like I said, uh, this is pretty global, including uh, you know from east to west and Midwest and then you know uh, Canada and, and you know, Korea. Um, she is actually uh, rep representing an uh, um, you know, organization in the Global Chamber of Commerce in uh, Maryland, Baltimore, and I'd like to listen to her opinion on this too. Uh, in, um, in, uh, in how she feels about the, um, uh, the trend in the fintech industry or industry in general. So can you uh, say a few words on that please, Mijam? Oh, hello. Hi, everyone. And uh, thank you, Han, for um, uh, giving me a little time to you know, speak about uh, Global Chamber. And um, I mean, I'm not in, you know, particularly expert in fintech area, but, you know, generally, I can say a few words about the environment in uh, around this area, uh, Washington, D.C., Maryland, and uh, Baltimore uh, as well. And I myself uh, also uh, running a uh, consulting firm, which actually helping uh, companies in, you know, U.S. and Asia to enter, um, you know, each other's, you know, the market um, uh, entry. But uh, uh, this area, I see uh, quite a lot of a robust, you know, the activity uh, despite uh, pandemics, uh, you know, limitation and restrictions for uh, travel uh, to different uh, places for business development. Um, we do have, you know, large base uh, of uh, research, you know, the organizations, the universities and private and uh, public sector uh, industries, you know, uh, in this area. Johns Hopkins, you know, there are really the forefront of um, uh, bio, you know, the health and medical uh, related, you know, the industry, uh, Georgetown and George Mason and University of Maryland, they have, uh, uh, you know, the fantastic uh, incubators and accelerators, you know, throughout the region. And uh, globally, I see uh, because of this, you know, restriction, um, a lot of things actually moved on to the virtual, um, you know, platform. Uh, that was, you um, 
I think the people realize, you know, they could be uh, quite uh, effective. Um, as Perry said, you know, that we would all uh, you know, prefer actually dinner, you know, the, over the virtual coffee and things like that. But this actually, you know, opens some sort of like a new norm where, you know, uh, you can actually meet and, and develop the business and opportunities for investment this way as well. So uh, in this area, we had a pretty big, like, you know, the investment forum and platform that used to be an in-person, but now it actually moved to a virtual platform where, you know, 700, you know, sometimes like 800, 900 people actually register and then they do pitching and things like that. So in many area, you know, cybersecurity, and uh, because of a lot of uh, defense industry in this area, the Virginia, uh, people are interested in that and biohealth is really the forefront of uh, uh, investment and also research, uh, uh, you know, the forefront. Uh, so uh, despite of, you know, um, restriction, as I said, uh, we saw the robust, uh, really the activities and a lot of exchanges. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm serving also, you know, some of the South Korean, you know, clients who are interested in, uh, you know, the doing business in the United States, uh, mainly within you know, the high tech um, uh, industry. So, uh, and now we have, you know, the more good news on, you know, the vaccine front and things like that. I think that there is a, like a pent up desire for, you know, uh, as soon as we get a little bit of these restrictions lift, you know, we want to get back and then, you know, uh, uh, do more, you know, the exchange uh, in terms of, you know, investment and finding a good idea and commercializations of a good idea and then etc. So that will be just the general, you know, environment uh, around my area. And thanks, Han, for this uh, great, um, uh, you know, webinar. Oh, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, because their organization is hosting a lot of good webinars as well, attended the uh, few in the past, so good. Um, we have a few more minutes, so any other, I think we probably could take another question or, or so. Um, anybody uh, has one? Find out already, and let me see here. Uh, let's see here. All righty. Uh, and, uh, um, yeah, then actually, um, we could actually uh, wrap up, unless you have any uh, questions, you can actually wrap up. I think uh, Han Lu and in the other, um, uh, uh, the staff will probably move on to uh, next session. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, um, thank you so much. Uh, on behalf of uh, my company, Shackle Group, and then also as a guest speaker of uh, uh, Venture Cafe, thank you so much. And I hope this um, program brings some value to you. And I'm going to turn the floor back to Han Lu. She's the uh, 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 dedicated staff of uh, Venture Cafe. Thanks, Han. Thank you so much, Han. Um, we hope you guys had a wonderful time at today's session. I think it was super interesting, especially for me because I'm not in this space. But if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to Venture Cafe um, on our website. Please also feel free to reach out to Han. Um, and we hope that you guys all have a wonderful rest of your evening and continue joining these sessions. And we hope to hold future sessions with Han and Yusaku Group as well. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. We'll end the meeting today, but have a wonderful night, guys. Thanks. Thank you.